Awesome. Okay. Welcome to Divine Farmer Health Podcast this morning. And I am running solo. Jimmy had a prior engagement. So I'm delighted to be here with you guys. And our topic today is digestion, which is a huge topic. And I'm going to talk about the stomach. And I think some of the things I'm going to share with you are going to blow you away because they usually do when I tell my clients this. But we're going to talk about what our stomach acid should be doing. And we're gonna talk about heartburn. We're gonna talk about the antacids and how bad they are. So we've got a full topic today on stomach digestion. I just wanna introduce myself for those of you who maybe not know me and maybe the first time you're jumping on. My name's Chris McKee. Uh, Jimmy and I are partners in Divine Farmer Health. I'm a certified nutritionist, diet counselor, nutrition educator, and the big one is a nutrigenomics practitioner. Uh, what that means is I can do genetic testing and read genetic tests. So I've been practicing for almost 30 years so I've watched this whole health field just explode. It's a very exciting time to be in nutrition because we have so much uh, good research going on right now. And yet there are some basic things, foundational things that Jim and I are always harping on, which is organ it's function. Very exciting to have it. Yet there and are today basic- I'm going to be talking about one of our big organs, right? Our stomach and crucial for long-term health and vitality. So let me just give you a few statistics on how many people are taking antacids because this is a kind of a shocking thing but we have uh we have approximately one half of the american population taking an antacid either uh, maybe once or twice a week or 25 or 26 percent of that is on a daily basis now, some of those are over the counter, some of those are prescription, and I'm going to dive into that a little bit later, but people are not digesting well, <laughs> their, their stomachs are not digesting well, and so they run in Gravitums or a Rolaids or something, and then the next thing you know, they're doing an over-counter antacid, the next thing you know, they're at the doctors and saying that's not even working. So we'll talk about why that is. Your stomach, I, I want you to visualize your stomach like a washing machine. Uh, You know, when you put clothes in your washing machine, you fill it up, right? Let's say you put a load of towels in. You're going to fill your washing machine up with water because if you didn't, it wouldn't work well, right? So you, you put your towels in there, you fill it up with water and then it agitates it mixes and moves around like this and and the towels mix and move around and and, or your clothes or whatever and it all gets washed and then you have clean clothes so you think of your stomach the same way when you start to think about eating just thinking about eating or smell food cooking your stomach starts to produce something called hydrochloric acid and pepsin and it is like filling up the washing machine before the food comes in and so we want to have that hydrochloric acid and pepsin coming up in the stomach so when your food enters the stomach it, it works like that washing machine. It agitates and moves around and mixes it up and you get good digestion. And the food should be out of the stomach within a couple hours, unless you had a really heavy meal. Let's say like steak and baked potato with lots of butter on it. That's gonna probably take like four hours to get out of the stomach. But a typical meal that's not real high in fat should be out of the stomach in a couple hours. So what we see in our, in our country, especially, is people eat way too much. First of all, your stomach holds about two and a half cups of food comfortably. Most people will overeat and then they're going to go, oh, I ate too much. And then that starts putting pressure on that little valve at the end of your esophagus. And it starts to push up on that valve. And eventually that can erode the valve. And then we start to see acid coming up in the esophagus. That happens over a period of time. Now, when you're younger, and those of you who are in your 20s or 30s, you can probably still eat like just about anything and digest it because we make really good stomach acid when we're younger. But as we age, over the age of 40, that starts to really diminish. And by the time we reach the age of 60, we've lost half our stomach acid production. So we don't make anywhere near the stomach acid we did when we were younger. That's why when you're younger, you know, you can eat pizza and just go to bed, right? And then when you're 60, you eat too late at night, and you get heartburn when you lay down. We just don't have enough stomach acid. I want to talk a little bit more about Um, what stomach acid does, because I want you to realize how important it is for you to have good stomach acid and good balance in your stomach acid. 
So one of the primary things your stomach acid does is it breaks down protein. So whenever you eat a piece of protein, protein has to be broken apart into what we're called amino acids. So a full complete protein, like an egg, let's say, has 22 amino acids. So when we eat an egg, then your stomach acid takes it and breaks it all apart into all these little chains. So you can use all those proteins as they enter the small intestine and get in the bloodstream. So we do break down primarily in the stomach acid our protein. So that's super important. We also make something in the stomach called intrinsic factor. And intrinsic factor binds to B12 in your foods that you eat and allows you to absorb vitamin B12. Also, all the B vitamins. We pretty much need all the B vitamins to have some stomach acid in order for you to utilize them. Minerals. I'm going to read you all the minerals that we need to have stomach acid for. Calcium, magnesium, zinc, copper, and most of our B vitamins, which I mentioned. So a lot of the really important minerals require good stomach acid. So we need to have adequate HCL in order to break these down. Now we start to get some fat digestion here and also some carbohydrate digestion in the, in the stomach. It's, it is a lot more done down lower, but it does start to break down in the stomach. So we need sufficient stomach acid. Um, so we know that when we don't have sufficient stomach acid, it begins to open the door for us to have more of a chance of getting food poisoning because you know, your stomach acid is your first line of defense. Think about it. We can eat a food and we put it in our mouth. We chew it up and we swallow it. And our stomach acid is there. It's pretty acidic, right? Your stomach acid is like, like somewhere around 1.7% acid, a really acid. So if you took it out and put it on your edge of your arm, it would burn a hole in your arm. Um, so it's really there to protect us from incoming microbes on the food, which we, we can get. There's, you know, we get fresh vegetables. Sometimes there's things on there. And so that is our first line of defense for the body to, to identify a microbe and kill it off. And so it's really important from that standpoint that it protects us from incoming microbes. So if we have low stomach, let's talk about low stomach acid and let's talk about heartburn or GERD, gastroesophageal reflux disease, big word, right? GERD. So let's talk about this because if we're losing stomach acid as we age and which we just determined that we do, then what happens is that washing machine that you wanted to put all those towels in is now only halfway full. So you could imagine if you just put those towels in your washing machine and only filled it up halfway and you turn your washing machine on, what would happen? Well, it would just sit there and kind of go, eh, 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 eh. <laughs> have you ever had a washing machine spin and it's all out of balance and everything? Not enough water in there. And our stomach acid is the same way. So if we don't have sufficient stomach acid and it's not filling up that washing machine and we put in the same amount of food, that food is just gonna sit there and not digest well. Now I live in Texas, we're over hundred degrees here for I don't know how many days now, but Texas in the summer is really hot. But imagine, cause your, your body, right? Your body temperature is, clo is close to 98, right? 97.8, 98 degrees. So I want you to visualize, let's say you have a plate of food and you take it and you put it out in the 98 degree temperature on the sidewalk and then you wait four hours, would you eat that food? Probably not, because there's things that might be growing on that, right? It might be fermenting, there might be bacteria growing. So you can imagine when you have a low stomach acid and you put that food in that stomach that's only halfway full of hydrochloric acid, and they're sitting in there and trying to digest at 98 degrees, what's going to happen? It's going to start to ferment. You're going to start to get that, that heartburn is going to start coming up because it's not digesting well. So that's usually the first stage of the going to get in the Tums or the Rolaids or something like that. We go, oh, we have a little heartburn. We don't feel like digested dinner very good. A pop of Rolaids or a Tums, right? It seems pretty innocuous. The trouble is, you know, eventually that Tums or that Rolaids doesn't do it. And then the next thing you know, you're going to the pharmacy and you're going to look for some over-the-counter Pepsid. 
um, you start taking that on a regular basis and then pretty soon that doesn't work and you end up at the doctor's office. So what you've done by taking these antacids is you've lowered that hydrochloric acid more and more and more and more. And yeah, for the moment, it takes away the acidity, right? And then what those drugs do is they actually cause your stomach to open up and let the food go down quicker, but it's not fully digested. That's a big problem. So let's, let's talk about all of the side effects of these proton pump inhibitors, as a lot of them are called. And let me just read you some of them because I want you to recognize these if you know um, if you know that you take these or you've been on, obviously the over-the-counter Toms and Rolaids, we're all familiar with that. And then there's Prilosec over-the-counter, which is a really common one. But there's Prevacid, Protonix, Asifex, Nexium, Dexalant. Those are the top ones. Uh, Zgerd is another one that are called proton pump inhibitors. And so what these things do, and I will tell you this, there was a, um, I, I guess you would say an article or a warning or whatever that was put out by the FDA in 2022, actually sounding the alarm for long-term use of these drugs. And when the FDA finally wakes up and does that, you know that it really is serious because in my world and our world and Jimmy and I, that what we work with, we've known for a long time that these drugs are not good for long-term use. So to see the FDA come out and say, we are sounding the alarm that we shouldn't be putting people on these and they shouldn't be on them in the long term is really concerning, right? So let's look at some of the things that happen when you start taking these proton pump inhibitors or even the antacids, over-the-counter antacids. So that stomach acid, not only does it break down protein, uh, helps you utilize your minerals, helps you use all your B vitamins, but it actually triggers when your food leaves the stomach and it's digested well and all that hydrochloric acid's in there and everything is all mixed up, it triggers, when it gets into the small intestine, it triggers your gallbladder to make um, bile. And if you don't even have gallbladder, it's going to make your liver dump it in there. Um, it triggers your pancreas to make insulin. It triggers your pancreas to make digestive enzymes. And it also starts the whole process of feeding your good gut bacteria. So when we have poor stomach acid and we are diminishing it more and more and more, and the stomach opens up and just lets the food on down, it alters your gut microbiome. In other words, that acid that's coming in is triggering a lot of things further down in your small intestine. And so what we know when people have been on these antacids for a longer period of time, we see a much higher rate of bacterial overgrowth in the small intestine, which you don't want. So we start to see that, we start to see candida, which is a, another overgrowth, more candida overgrowth. So that's one of the side effects. Um, it also obviously prevents you from breaking down your protein good. And so utilizing your protein is diminished. Uh, again, your B12, which is a, so essential for your nervous system and for your brain function, so many things that we, um, you know, energy, all those kinds of things. We're, we're not able to utilize our B12 very well. Now, the association between um, these proton pump inhibitors and osteoporosis is a big one because we're not able to break down those primary minerals that are needed for bone, which is the calcium and the magnesium, right? So there's a big correlation there between poor stomach acid and being on these proton and pump inhibitors and an increased loss of bone. There is also, when you take these, you reduce what's called nitric oxide production. Now, nit nitric oxide is something that your body makes so that it, it vasodilates your blood vessels. It relaxes your blood vessels, which we want. But there's a connection between these proton pump inhibitors and high blood pressure because they're preventing nitric oxide production. Now we're getting constriction of the blood vessels. So that, I, I think that probably makes sense to you. Um, there is an also in 2016, a research study that connected the uh, dementia and proton pump inhibitors. In fact, they showed that there was a 44% increased risk of dementia 
for those on these antacids. So lots of bad news with that, right? Um, so we don't wanna be on these if we can help it. Now, I wanna discuss a little bit about some of the things that show up when we have low stomach acid, because we may, we may not connect them. We just think of heartburn, right? We just think, oh, we didn't digest very well, or I feel bloated, or I feel overly full. Um, we don't think of anything else that would be going on in the body. But we, I want to remind you guys that we always have an interconnectedness with everything. You cannot take one part of the body and separate it out and say it doesn't impact another part of the body. It absolutely does. Everything is interconnected. So one of the things that Jimmy and I always talk about is this organ function because every organ has a connection to another one. Like I just said, the stomach acid will trigger the pancreas to produce insulin, right? And enzymes, everything is interconnected. So when we think about poor stomach acid, we have to look at the whole body. We can't just say, oh, it's just in my stomach. It's just happening in my stomach. No, it's kind of like what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. Well, no, what happens in the stomach doesn't stay in the stomach, okay? So let's let's look at some of the symptoms that we can have that may you may not even think about. The main ones being belching and bloating and you know that kind of thing. Yeah, we know, we kind of pay attention to that. It must be happening in the stomach. But one of the things could be flatulence right after you eat which you wouldn't think that would be happening on the other end that quickly, but yes, it can. Um, the other one is itching in the rectum. And that is another thing, right? It's totally at the other end of the digestive system. And you're, you're not even thinking about it being in the stomach, but low stomach acid can cause that. So it's all tied together in the digestive tract. Food allergies or food intolerances. So we start to see us more reactive to more and more foods because our stomach acid is low. And so that just kind of builds on itself and is, accelerates. Um, nausea after taking supplements. I hear this quite often with my clients to say, I can't take supplements that make me nauseous. Well, we're not, we're not get, have a sufficient stomach acid in order to break those down and utilize them. Just like I said, with, you know, with all the minerals and the B vitamins and everything. So Oftentimes you just need to address, and we'll talk about this in a minute, how to get that stomach acid up so you can digest those supplements better. Um, weak and peeling fingernails. That's something that you would not connect with stomach acid, right? But if you're not absorbing and utilizing your calcium and magnesium, then yes, it's going to affect your fingernails. So, you know, that is not just, uh, it may be a lack of calcium magnesium, but only because you're not breaking it down and utilizing it. Another one is a dilation on the nose and the cheeks, um, redness all up and through here. A lot of people call it rosacea um, and that can be rosacea, but this is non-alcoholic, also not alcoholics. You'll usually see this here, but if you're seeing redness around the cheek area on the nose area, oftentimes when we put people on a good digestive program, this goes away. So this may not be, a rosacea may be misdiagnosed in some cases. It may not be rosacea. It may be low stomach acid. So this is kind of a body sign telling you that your stomach acid is low. Iron deficiency, because you're not absorbing your iron or breaking it down well on the stomach. Um, and that can be copper as well, things like that. Acne, uh, this is one that's kind of interesting. Adult onset acne can be correlated with low stomach acid. And then I mentioned the chronic uh, candida overgrowth. So that would be in the small intestine. You get a lot of overgrowth in the small intestine. Now, those are just some of them. I wanted to read to you um, some of the thing, other things correlated with poor stomach digestion. And this is a great book. If you have digestive issues, it's called Digestive Wellness, um, Lipsky. Uh, this is a second edition. I think she has a third edition now, but if you have any digestive issues, this is a, this is just a great, easy to read um, book and it's deep, but it's not over the, overly deep. Right. And then she gives you a lot of natural solutions in here. So I just, I love this book, but I wanted to read to you some of the diseases correlated with low gastric acidity, and there's a huge list here, so I'm not going to read all of them, but I just want to give you kind of an idea. One of them is asthma, and this is something that so many people would never connect, but what we do know with asthma is absorption of calcium magnesium is super important with an asthmatic, 
And if you have low stomach acid, again, you're not going to be breaking down and utilizing those minerals. So there can be a big correlation between asthma and low stomach acid, um, diabetes, eczema, eczema and um, psoriasis on the skin. So skin disorders in general, I would say, uh, gallbladder disease, because guess what? You're not triggering the gallbladder to produce the bile when you have stomach acid that's really low, and then we get bile back up in the gallbladder. A chronic hives, skin, again, skin disorder, some serious stuff like lupus. Uh, it could have started in the beginning, um, the autoimmune disorders we start to see because of low stomach acid. So rheumatoid arthritis is in there and osteoporosis, which we just talked about, rosacea we talked about, um, and then psoriasis, I mentioned psoriasis. So uh, there are hyper and hypothyroidism, you would never connect that with stomach acid, right? But that, those are some of the diseases that are connected to low stomach acid and then pernicious anemia. So anemia being because we're not obviously breaking down the iron in the stomach. So those are some pretty serious diseases in the body that you would never connect to the stomach, right? So it's so important that we get that stomach working correctly for long-term health, uh, not just for the digestion of food, um, but really all the way up to the brain, right? And so let's talk about some of the things that we can do to help restore stomach digestion. Now, one of the things when you've been on um, an antacid for a long time, you have to remember that the body has become dependent upon it. So it doesn't make its own acid anymore. It just figures you're just going to pop a pill and, and just zip it all up. Um, and proton pumps are these little pumps in your stomach that push out the gastric juices. We have proton pumps all over the body, actually, so even in the kidneys and things like that. So we're targeting, obviously, the stomach with these proton pump inhibitors, but unfortunately, they've seen them connected to some of the other proton pumps in the body. And so you just can't go off of it because you'll get a rebound effect. And I have worked with so many clients helping them come off of these things. And it has to be super slow. The longer you've been on it, the slower you gotta go. And so I really encourage you to work with a healthcare practitioner that is savvy with all of this stuff because you have to do it really slow. And some people are gonna take longer than others. If you're older, it's probably gonna take you longer, okay? So just be patient, but you can get off of these. I wanna, I wanna tell my husband's story because some of you may know this, some of you may not. He got cancer very young at 38. Uh, he had Hodgkin's disease, which is cancer of the lymphatic system. And so it's a what's called the young man's cancer, a very um, common in the young men. And so we're talking a long time ago because he's 70, 90, he was 38 at the time, right? But they were pretty brutal with their treatments. They did full body radiation from his neck lymph gland to his ankle, radiated his whole body for six weeks. And then when he got done with that, they started chemo. And this whole process went on for two years. So you can imagine what a mess he was when he got done, right? And so they um, messed up his digestion big time, right? Because you're gonna fry the digestive tract when you radiate so bad. So they put him on an antacid, like a proton pump inhibitor and said, you know, you just need to take this so you can digest your food. Well, at the time I wasn't into nutrition. I didn't know all I know now, but we started working with a nutritionist after the treatments because we wanted to restore his body. And that nutritionist said, we need to get you off of these things because he started telling us all the things I just told you. Well, he'd been on them for a couple of years. And so we had to really take it slow. And it took us probably about four months to get him off of it while we added in pro-digestion. So we'll I'll tell you what that is in a minute. We had to just slowly lower the medication and increase the pro-digestion for in order for him to come off of it. I've had clients where it's taken six months maybe because they've been on this for 10 years. So you have to just go by how long you've been on it, what your age is, and then you need to get some help and assistance with some of the pro-digestion things I'm going to talk about here to be able to add those in as you're starting to come off of these medications because your body's just going to rebound and you're going to make more acid than you ever made even before you were on the medication. So it's a very subtle, slow thing that you have to do. So that's my caution for you. 
is don't just stop it <laughs> because you just can't do that. Now, as you're coming down off of these things, you can add in what we call pro-digestion. Now, there are supplements made from high, made with hydrochloric acid and pepsin, which is the primary um, enzymes that you use in your stomach. And you can go and you can get hydrochloric acid and pepsin supplements again, but I really encourage you to work with a practitioner so you know what the dosage and everything. But we want to increase that stomach acid, right? We want to fill up that uh, washing machine again and get it working good. And you can add those in as you're coming down off of these antacids because your body's going to start making some acid, right? But you also have to make sure we don't get too acidic. And so what we like to use is um, using something like a an enzyme, a digestive enzyme, so that we're making sure we're breaking all that food down completely. And you take them with every meal, making sure you're breaking the food down that's entering the stomach uh, and entering the small intestine, breaking it down all the way. The other thing is probiotics. Because this does interfere, as I mentioned, with the bacterial bacteria in the um, in the small intestine and the large intestine, we need to read or do some good bacteria as we're coming down off of these because you probably have had the bacteria damaged. If you're on other medications, you're gonna definitely have your bacteria impacted by the medication. So you wanna add in some probiotics. It's also really important to get on a good multivitamin mineral complex. Because remember I talked about how many minerals and B vitamins are not getting broken down correctly when you have poor stomach acid. And then the more you drop that stomach acid down, the less you're gonna utilize those. All of those minerals and vitamins need to be present in order to heal your stomach, to heal that esophageal valve right there at the bottom of the esophagus. Zinc is a really important one here. So you wanna have a really good broad spectrum multivitamin mineral on board and you wanna be able to digest it, right? So that's where those pro-digestion hydrochloric acid pepsin supplements come in. You wanna start slow on those, low and slow. As for this whole thing is low and slow. Um, the other thing that you can actually purchase in most natural food stores, it's something called Swedish bitters. If you don't want to use the HCL supplement, you can purchase Swedish bitters. These have been used for hundreds of years, actually. Um, they are something that you would take before a meal just to get that digestive system working, just to get this hydrochloric acid you know, pumps moving and going. And so those are easily found probably online too, I'm sure. Um, there is also something that you can take instead of a Rolaids, or if you start to feel a little bit of a heartburn, it's called DGL, diglyceride licorice. They come in chewable form. And actually we always have some in the cupboard. Uh, it just, didn't, cause I'm, I'm 72, my husband's 79, you know, our stomach digestion isn't what it used to be. Um, and sometimes there's something, some nights it's just, it doesn't seem like it's digesting really well. So I'll just chew on a DGL and within 30 minutes, I feel great. And if you are on high blood pressure medicine, you have to be cautious with licorice. And this is diglyceride licorice. Now it comes in different flavors. I think it's a licorice flavor. And then there's one that's a, like a chocolate flavor. It doesn't really matter. It has the same ingredients. It's very easy to chew up. It's very easy to take with you when you travel. Instead of packing around Rolaids or Tums, you want to take the um, diglyceride licorice with you. It's, it's super good for soothing the stomach and calming down the stomach and tamping down the heartburn if your heartburn starts to flare up a little bit. Now, we have one minute left. <laughs> um, so I just want to recap. That was a lot of information that you want stomach acid. It's vitally important for your whole body system. And if you've been on antacids for a long period of time, yes, you can get off of them, but you want to work with a healthcare practitioner to get off of them. And then some of the supplements that I suggested for you are probably ones that your healthcare practitioner would suggest for you. And um, I just want to real quick, before I go, remind you that Jimmy and I are doing a webinar on Monday, and it is on organ function and weight loss. It's going to be absolutely fantastic. Um, get signed up. We'll put the link in the feed here. We have already gone over our signups for our Zoom, so we're just going to open it up for some more. So we want to keep inviting you guys to come in and listen. If you can't make it live, we will record it for you. So you can, you have to register to get the recording, though. So make sure and... Um, 
get on the link and register so we can get you the recording if that's what you need. So today's topic was a big topic and I know that's a lot of information, but it's so vitally important for long-term health and vitality. You've got to get that big organ, the stomach working well. All right, you guys have a great rest of your day. Bye for now.